I'm here to explain about the generators and how they really work. When the generator was invented, the primary idea was to get electricity out, but nature has different forces at work that they haven't talked to you or explained to you, and I'm trying to hear today, trying to explain them to you. Attached to generators is a copper coil which acts like an electromagnet, a magnet. This acts like a magnet, the stator, and the casing acts like a magnet. They repel each other. The force of electricity, making electricity, repels each other. If you put electricity in, then it pushes it along. If it, here's two magnets. They push apart with the same pole. They push apart. That's what they do. They push apart. The energy going in, the work, the force going in, the work, the force going into this, I keep saying it because the car is coming around, is transferred to the casing. The energy just don't disappear. The casing is locked down. It turns into heat. That force don't just disappear. You can take that force out of the case to power another generator is what I'm saying. Thank you. I would like to explain how motors and generators really work. If you put electricity in, you get a motor. If you turn the shaft, you get power out here. It's a generator. The force, if you spin the generator here, the force is transferred to the casing, about 95% of it and how to get that force out of the casing and into another generator. You turn the generator upside down and you spin it. You float it with a magnet, you spin it, you take another generator, which is regenerative braking. All regenerative braking is is another generator. They have different forms of regenerative braking, but this is all you'll need is, is another generator. By spinning it, the shaft, all the force that was on the casing is now on the shaft and you've got to stop it to get it to work. You use regenerative braking to get it to stop, to make it work. You cannot get it to a complete stop. You've got to use gearing. You use one, like if this is an 1800 RPM, you would need the next generator up here would be a nice start, would be a 3600 RPM generator to get it to work. Now you'd take and divide that and you'd get it down to about 93, 92%, I mean about 95, 98% of the force back into this one. So you're going to have about 190% generation over that. That is enough to take electric motor and get power, extra power out and run for as long as your generators work for years. This is a system to get twice the uh, energy out of a generator. Out of This is a 5 horsepower motor to a 5.5 horsepower motor. This is a two to one gear ratio. 
this is a 2500 watt generator and this is a 2500 watt generator that we're going to be used for regenerative braking we're going to be spinning the generator we're going to be floating the generator and we're going to have two ball bearings down in should have been down in here to hold it in place hold this one two ball bearings to hold it in place and float it at the same time to make sure it don't <laughs> This has a 7200 RPM potential. And what's going to happen is, as you start spinning it, this one's going to slow it down so it really will never, should never really get over 3600 RPMs. Both generators is going to be working at 2500 watt potential. So you get 5000 watts out. You're, this is the casing. Really, this is the casing of this generator is all you're doing. That when you turn it up down, side down and spun it, that this shaft was the new casing and you've got to stop it to get this generator to work. So you're using this generator, regenerative braking, to stop it. It's transferring the energy from the casing into a generator is what you're doing. I hope you can see the little arrow moving on this video, I don't know. I'll just use the ink pen. If this is a 2500 watt generator, it's going to take 5 to 5 point horsepower to turn it. And it's usually a 3600 RPM generator. So you're going to have to spin this 3600 RPMs and 5 horsepower is going in. But now we're going to flip it. When you're spinning the generator, you're spinning the case at 3600 RPM. This is spinning with it. You've got to stop it when it starts going under load. This has the same force as this. These are both magnets. I want you to think of the coils as magnets. All you're doing is transferring it with another generator. Let's get a explain generator a little more. These are magnets and these are magnets. This, now when this case is spinning it's transferring force to here. When you start putting it under load, it's going to act like magnetic gearing. But it'll be a one-to-one -one ratio. You're probably going to only lose like 3%, but you have to lock the case down. You need regenerative braking. This is what your generator looks like. It's going to be spinning. This will be spinning. You've got to stop this for the generator to work. This is going to have a force of 5.5 horsepower out. 5 to 5.5 horsepower out. When you get it stopped with regenerative braking. If you need any, just ask me. If you have any questions, just ask me. I hope you can see the little arrow moving on this video. I don't know. I'll just use the ink pen. If this is a 2500 watt generator, it's going to take 5 to 5 point horsepower to turn it. And it's usually a 3600 RPM generator, so you're going to have to spin this 3600 RPMs and 5 horsepower is going in. But now we're going to flip it. When you're spinning the generator, you're spinning the case at 3600 RPM. This is spinning with it, you've got to stop it when it starts going under load. This has the same force as this. These are both magnets. I want you to think of the coils as magnets. All you're doing is transferring it with another generator. Let's get a explain generator a little more. These are magnets and these are magnets. This, now when this case is spinning, it's transferring force to here. When you start putting it under load, it's going to act like magnetic gearing. But it'll be a one-to-one -one ratio. You're probably going to only lose like 3%, but you have to lock the case down. You need regenerative braking. This is what your generator looks like. It's going to be spinning. This will be spinning. 
we've got to stop this for the generator to work. This is going to have a force of 5.5 horsepower out. 5 to 5.5 5 horsepower out. When you get it stopped with regenerative braking. If you need any, just ask me. If you have any questions, just ask me. I'm going to call this next video Stop Under Rotation to get the force out of the generator that's being by the back caused by the back torque. This generator, the top, the casing of it will be spinning, if this was a 3600 RPM generator of 5 horsepower, it would take 5 horsepower to spin it. You're going to be floating it. It's going to be spinning at 7200 RPMs. This will be spinning at 3600 RPMs. Regenerative braking is going to stop it to 3600 RPM, but it's going to be a constant force of 5 horsepower coming out. The making of electricity is a byproduct <laughs> of this force. The force is just in the case, it's using the case, all it is is using the casing <laughs> to where it locked down using that force to generate extra power. By knowing the theory of relativity, that everything is relative, that I was going to explain, I had made a small mistake in one of the, the, uh, the videos that I made about uh, spinning the generator to get free energy. If, you, if this was a, a five horsepower generator and you was trying to get 2,500 watts out, when this generator spins, it is spin at 7,200 RPMs. The bottom is going to be spinning at 3,600 RPMs, but it's going to be locked. It's going to take five and a, it's going to take five horsepower to stop this, and it'll be a constant five horsepower out. When it, it'll take a constant five horsepower out. You'll take a regenerative braking to stop it. It'll be spinning, everything will be relative. It'll be just like it stopped. The uh, shaft will really be spinning it. On the inside, it'll be working just like a regular generator if you had it locked down and spinning. It works the same way. It's the same principle. It's just flipped and spinning. Magnets going past copper coils is the same thing. But the force, when you're spinning it, the force is transferred out. The case has to be locked and it's locked with regenerative braking. That takes care of the back torque on the generator. I would like to explain how motors and generators really work. If you put electricity in, you get a motor. If you turn the shaft, you get power out here. It's a generator. The force, if you spin the generator here, the force is transferred to the casing, about 95% of it. And how to get that force out of the casing and into another generator. You turn the generator upside down and you spin it. You float it with a magnet. You spin it. You take another generator, which is regenerative braking. All regenerative braking is is another generator. They have different forms of regenerative braking, but this is all you'll need is, is another generator. By spinning it, the shaft, all the force that was on the casing is now on the shaft, and you've got to stop it to get it to work. You use regenerative braking to get it to stop, to make it work. You cannot get it to a complete stop. You've got to use gearing. You use one, like if this is an 1800 RPM, you would need the next generator up here, would be a nice start, would be a 3600 RPM generator to get it to work. Now you'd take and divide that and you'd get it down to about 93, 92%, I mean about 95, 98% of the force back into this one. So you're going to have about 190% generation over that. 
that is enough to take an electric motor and get power, extra power out and run for as long as your generators work for years.